The Azalea City of Mobile, Alabama is the site for a Friday night showdown between number 11 Oklahoma State and South Alabama. This stadium is home to a lot of history. Ladd Peebles Stadium was the site of the first ever game coached by Bear Bryant for Alabama back in 1958, a loss to the number 15 LSU Tigers that night. Joey Jones eventually would play for Bear Bryant, and because of that experience when he was hired as the first head coach in the history of this program back in 2008, that gave this program instant credibility. Speaking of credibility, Mike Gundy quickly becoming a household name 10 years ago. This was a program that wasn't even close to the level of success it has right now. Mike Gundy's done a fantastic job. Three out of the last four years, 10 wins, five of seven. It's a program that's only had eight 10 win seasons. The job he's done, been fantastic. First meeting between South Alabama and Oklahoma State. Only the second time that a ranked opponent has ever entered Ladd Peebles Stadium to take on these South Alabama Jaguars which are uh, participating in just its ninth year of college football. <laughs> South Alabama won the toss and deferred to the second half. The LSU transfer Tyron Johnson is back to return for Oklahoma State. So we'll get to see the prolific Cowboy offense on the field first. Corliss Waitman will get set to kick away. Off we go from Mobile tonight. And out to the 25 comes Mason Rudolph in the Cowboy offense. Molly, tell me about the Heisman candidates. Well, Adam, every morning Mason Rudolph looks in the mirror and sees this season's goals staring back at him. Literally, the quarterback wrote them there as a constant reminder. And in addition to some personal statistical goals, he has the words Big 12 championship, saying anything less will be a failure this year. He wrote Leave a Legacy, which he's done with no fewer than 11 school records under his belt. And final goal, enjoy every moment. I watched him in pregame. He looked loose and confident, and there's definitely a lot of swag to this year's team, and it starts with him. 30th career start for Rudolph, closing in on Brandon Whedon's passing record at Oklahoma State. He could break it tonight. He needs just 244 yards to surpass Brandon Whedon. His excellent running back, Justice Hill, is with him to start this series. Hill stopped up after a gain of three yards. Zach Beffert with the stop. For Mason Rudolph, a preparation freak. Very adamant in the film room. What do you like about him? What do you not like about him on tape? Great deep ball, excellent touch. It allows his receivers to make plays. And when he gets pressure, he's, he's got good pocket savvy, but avoiding the pressure is something Mason can continue to work on. Took some hits last week against Tulsa in Oklahoma State's opener. On second down, deep shot. Seen a lot of these this season. Looking for James Washington, one of those excellent wide receivers. He had Dorian Mills in coverage. Three NFL ready receivers headlined by James Washington. Watch for Chris Lacey and Marcel Aitman as well. Tell me about the left tackle concerns. Aaron Cochran, fifth year grad transfer from Cal. He's trying to solidify this offensive line. Very important to protect Mason Rudolph. Blitz coming from the Jaguars. Rudolph. Incomplete, looking for Dylan Stoner, and this is what South Alabama wanted to start the night. It is a three and out. We talked to the defensive coordinator, Kane Womack, and he said, we're gonna run a lot of man-to-man -to -man tonight. You see it man-to-man -man with the safety over the top, excellent coverage on third down by the South Alabama defense. Malcolm Bugs, outstanding lockdown coverage. Zach Siner drills a punt on a line 
And it will get a very friendly roll inside the South Alabama 30-yard line. Cole Garvin is a redshirt junior from Noonan, Georgia, a transfer from Marshall. Made just three starts last year when the starter Dallas Davis was injured. His college football debut as a quarterback came 342 days ago. He upset San Diego State. What do you mean when you say Farvism, though? Well, he's a bit of a gunslinger, right? He likes to gamble. He likes to take chances. And that's why he didn't win the starting job a year ago. They're trying to coach that out of him and allow him to just take what's there for the offense. From the 27-yard line, Garvin under pressure immediately and brought down by DeQuinton Osborne. Out of Grand Prairie, Texas, he has the sack. Excellent rush by DeQuinton Osborne. Does a good job with his hands, working on the guard and the center, ripping through and getting the quarterback down. Great start for the Oklahoma State defensive line. A redshirt senior, three and a half sacks a year ago. Junior college transfer out of Kilgore in Texas adding to that depth up front. A loss of eight on the set. Under pressure with the corner blitz coming in. And it's wrapped up by Jordan McCray. Rodarius Williams was right in front of him. Third down coming. Calvin Bundage comes from, comes from the boundary. Good job pressuring the passer. Nice job. Plant drive come up and make the tackle to put South Alabama in third and long. Calvin Bundage is going to get more snaps tonight. Kenneth Edison Magruder, who is the starter at that outside backer safety position, got hurt in practice on Wednesday in Stillwater. So Bundage is going to have to play an even bigger role. Excellent off the edge. Love to bring him in pressure situations. In these spots, Glenn Spencer notorious for dialing up pressure. Play clock was stuck at 17, so there may be an issue with that clock. They have reset it on one side of the field. 25 on one side. It was a different time on the opposite side of the field. And now that play clock is down. So the officials will have to keep the offense heading in that direction, informed of what the play clock is sitting at. allows substitutions to come in for a third down and 10 which Glenn Spencer as Dusty mentioned likes to use for pressure. That's our lead official David Smith. It is an SEC crew tonight. So Cole Garvin the quarterback wants to make sure if he's looking for how much time he has to get the snap off he has the right spot to look at because he can't look beyond the opposite goalpost. The play clock is not operating properly. The play clock will be kept on the field. So there will be some issue here for offensive teams. South Alabama going in this direction and as you see the play clock is down on that side of the field. This building has been around since 1948 obviously some renovations the play clocks the scoreboard the video board all new additions but this old girl's been around for quite some time Of lineman and Jarrell Owens was there for the stop to shut down the drive. Excellent pressure off the edge by both Jarrell Owens. Calvin Bundage actually puts his hand to the ground. Great pressure from the edge. Cole Garvin knows there's nowhere to go. He steps up. The pressure gets home and the Cowboy defense gets off the field. And Cole Garvin is limping off the field after taking a couple of hits on that opening series.
Corliss Waitman drills a great punt. Jalen McCleskey back to the 15 yard line. And decent coverage from South Alabama. Three and outs each way to start the night here in Mobile, Alabama. One quarterback has to go get tended to in the medical tent. The other team's quarterback has that fire and intensity, and you get to see the Heisman candidate, Mason Rudolph, on the other side. Back here in Mobile, and Hurricane Irma definitely affecting things here in Alabama as an influx of evacuees are staying in Mobile. Jaguars tweeted out, anyone from the state of Florida can get into this and next week's game for free, but traffic affecting attendance. Joe Jones's wife doesn't know if she's going to be able to make it, and Oklahoma State staff had to consolidate rooms to make room for people from Florida. Thanks very much, Molly. Obviously, we're thinking about everybody who's in the state of Florida or trying to get out of the state of Florida right now. We were at our hotel here in Mobile. There were fans from Florida driving eight hours. I, I shouldn't even say fans. There were just people being displaced that were driving eight hours to get out of the state and coming here as a safe haven. Two plays for Justice Hill, and he moves the chains to the 40-yard line. Our thoughts, our prayers go with everybody who's being affected by this devastating hurricane. And we just hope if you haven't made it out, you stay safe. Jalen McCleskey picks up a few. An open field tackle by Malcolm Bugs. A lot of games have been canceled, postponed. Many games will not be made up. A lot of notable and ranked teams aren't going to be able to play their games because of this weather that has played a huge role in what has gone on over the course of the last couple of weeks, not only in Florida, but previously in Houston, Texas as well. Kane Wavick told us he felt that they could hold this Cowboy rushing attack into check. And here so far through two drives, very good rush defense by South Alabama. A third down and five here. Blitz gets picked up and Mason Rudolph more mobile than people give him credit for will take it into South Alabama territory with a first down. It's man-to-man -man coverage down the field. The coverage was good. Lane opened up for Mason Rudolph. He was able to easily pick up the first down. Had too many rushers on one side of the football. The lane opens right up. Mason Rudolph gets the easy first. Rudolph with a good strike for Chris Lacey, and he takes it to the 35-yard line, 14 yards and a first down. Chris Lacey's got excellent size and a good route runner. Here's the first carry for the true freshman, J.D. King, as he takes it for about two and a half. Dusty, I feel like you can say that for every receiver. They've got yeah. decent size and pretty good ball skills, and they're all good route runners. Six different guys you're going to see throughout the evening, all exactly what Adam just said. Size, speed, and the ability to go up and get the football. Yeah. Play action. Another good strike to Lacey, and another first down inside the 25-yard line in front of Gus Nave, the true freshman. Excellent job by this offensive line protecting for Mason Rudolph. You'll see he has a clean pocket. King works his way inside the 20. Six yards for the freshman out of Fitzgerald, Georgia. Short game there. Third down coming up. Well, they got this tempo going, don't they? Mike yep. Yursich, Mason Rudolph, foot on the gas, and they're going. As quickly as that ball's getting spotted, they're up ready to go. It could be taxing on a defense, Adam. You snap it that fast, don't allow you to rope to substitute very much, and wear you down. Third down and two. Fade. And it is the 
deflected and incomplete. Looking for their red zone target, Marcel Aitman, back from an injury. Excellent coverage by Nave and Lawrence. Well, they love to throw the fade to Aitman when they get in the red zone. That's a ball that should be caught. You know, Nave was in good position. That ball is put up high enough. That's an easy catch for Marcel Aitman. Just misjudges it. And the South Alabama defense gets off the field. This is a big stop to force a 31-yard try for Matt Amendola. Went one for two last week. Coach has told us he has a tendency to get inaccurate inside of 40 yards. That one was true to give Oklahoma State and Mike Gundy's crew a 3-0 lead halfway through the first. ESPN College Football, brought to you by Infinity. Empower the drive. And Axe, find your magic. Beautiful Azalea City, one of the many nicknames for the city of Mobile. Not necessarily in bloom all year round, but many gorgeous parts of this city. And some of the great foliage and flowers we get a chance to see. This was on the last South Alabama series. It ended with Cole Garvin getting wrapped up by Jarrell Owens and pretty much getting rolled up on it. And he had to limp back towards the sideline. The medical tent was placed over Cole Garvin. Let's get an update from Molly McGrath. Well, Adam Garvin was carted back to the locker room for x-rays on a right ankle injury. They did come back negative, but he's questionable to return. But remember, Dallas Davis not 100% healthy after a right shoulder injury. That's right. That's partially why Cole Garvin won the starting job. Not much of a return for a very good return man in Xavier Johnson. Jarrell Morrow with good coverage on the kickoff. So Dallas Davis who started 10 of 13 games last year but dealt with turf toe dealt with the shoulder injury that Molly talked about. He really played through the shoulder issue throughout the entirety of the second half of last year. So it tells you about this kid's toughness. Definitely a tough kid, a leader on this football team. It's been a, a, a hearty competition at quarterback, and even though he wasn't able to win it, he's been Cole Garvin's biggest fan. Now he gets his opportunity here tonight. So Joey Jones very comfortable with going to Dallas Davis, but how will he look tonight as he recovers from that shoulder issue after surgery in the offseason? Trey Minter had a very strong debut against Ole Miss. He'll pick up a few. Well, we've got a phenomenal showdown. Saturday Night Football presented by Wells Fargo. Top five matchup in Columbus. Rematch of last year. ABC and the ESPN app. You can also listen to it on ESPN Radio. Dusty, you're on your way to Columbus tomorrow. What are you expecting when you see these two teams? It's going to be a great matchup. I can't wait to watch the Oklahoma offensive line led by Orlando Brown against that Ohio State defensive line. When Nick Bosa is on Orlando Brown, it's must-see TV. Yeah, NFL scouts dream, huh? Davis into the flat, incomplete, looking for Sam Harris. Bill Rosinski, a man Dusty Dvorak, Ian Fitzsimmons will be on ESPN Radio for that call tomorrow night. Again, Bosa and Brown. Again, if you're watching at home and you're looking for a matchup, that'll be the one to watch for. The entire offensive line against the defensive line. I think it's the best offensive line in college football against pretty much the best defensive line in college football. That game probably going to be determined in the trenches. South Alabama struggled on third down in Oxford last week. Twist up front forced Davis out of the pocket. And Rodarius Williams brings down Deontay Moore to shut down the drive again. Oklahoma State runs twists up front with the defensive ends and defensive tackles. The pressure gets there. Really all they're doing is trying to set up the screen. They set it up nicely. But an excellent open field tackle to get the Cowboy defense off the field. So Jalen McCleskey will return. The last punt for Corliss Waitman was a career long of 58. The left footer with another good hang time kick. 
forcing the fair catch. Oklahoma State will take over with a lead. There is Cole Garvin back up on his feet, seemingly moving around a little bit better. We'll see what decisions Joey Jones has as the night goes on. Oklahoma State's pressure has been very strong thus far tonight. Let's go down the dusty road. I've been waiting for a long time to finally do this. Tell me about this pressure, Dustin. Well, the Quentin Osborne on the first play, excellent job working on the center, gets the rip up, and he gets the big sack. On first down, Justice Hill with a short gain. Jeremy Reeves, probably their best defensive player, is there for the stop. Rudolph with the tempo finds his top target James Washington and there goes James all the way home for an Oklahoma State touchdown 66 for a score He has just tied Des Bryant for the most touchdown receptions in Oklahoma State history. James Washington might be the front runner, certainly in the mix, to win the Bolitnikov this year for the top wide receiver in the country. Well, James Washington, Mason Ruff, they came back to school this year for unfinished business. Simple RPO, and James Washington takes it to the house. Well, we knew South Alabama was gonna be aggressive. The problem with being aggressive sometimes you get burned. Man-to-man -man coverage, they bring the all-out blitz, no safety over the top. It's a run-pass option, easy pitch and catch for Mason Rudolph and James Washington, and you see the speed in the open field as he takes it to the house. Two plays, 29 seconds, 68 yards, no problem for Oklahoma State. Very short kick by Matt Amendola. And from the six-yard line, Xavier Johnson looking for a big return. And we'll get across the 20. The tempo of Oklahoma State took a drive to get going, but that tempo can get going in a hurry. And once you get this offense going, it's hard to cool them off. High octane, explosive, as we just saw. Let's go back to the top of the broadcast. What did Joey Jones tell us? One of the most explosive offenses I've ever seen. And I get the feeling that a lot of coaches may be saying something along those lines about Oklahoma State by the end of the season. Dallas Davis still in the game for the injured Cole Garvin. Hit as he throws and through the hands of his intended target, Samori Collier. An absolute shot from Jarrell Owens. Jarrell Owens working off the edge. I mean, just an absolute great job getting up the field and pressuring the quarterback. He comes back inside under the tackle, fights off the running back, and delivers a big hit on Davis. High school running back at Palestine High School in Texas, the same school that produced Adrian Peterson. Quick pass on second down, caught by Jordan McRae, and he's out of bounds close to the sticks. And we talked about Oklahoma and Ohio State, but don't forget on ESPN, another fantastic matchup and another rematch of a game from a year ago. New quarterbacks at the helm of these programs, Jared Stidham at Auburn, Kelly Bryant at Clemson, Saturday at 7 Eastern on ESPN and the ESPN app. Can't wait to see how these quarterbacks do against these 
excellent defenses. Jared Stidham has never seen a pass rush like he's going to see from Clemson. Best defensive line in the country, do you think? Them in Ohio State. Okay. 1A, 1B. You pick. Excellent pursuit by Owens again as he brings down Collier. Well, Jarrell Owens is having himself a ball game so far. Comes underneath the tackle, up the field. You see the speed for another tackle for loss. Jarrell is an avid hog hunter. <laughs> so he goes out with a couple of dogs and he'll capture hogs with his bare hands. Looked a little like that on that particular play. Waitman. And to the sideline with a very good punt. And then Verk has one eye on this game and one eye out in Flushing. What's going on? You know I do, Adam. Still smarting from Federer's loss against Juan Martin Del Potro, but Del Potro looks great against Rafael Nadal. He's up a break, 5-3 right now in the first set. Semifinal action, of course, it's also available on the ESPN app along with ESPN. Sunday's final. One of these two men will be in it. We'll keep you updated. Once again, the app is a great way to find it. Back to more hog hunter stories. You know I don't dine on swine of you. <laughs> We'll figure out a way to incorporate some more of those as the night goes on, just for you, Adam. Man. You've been hog hunting, Adam? Have you? I've, you know I haven't. Who are you asking? I've been hog hunting. I Not by your hands. hands. <laughs> like to have a weapon. Another Oklahoma State series and another start for Justice Hill, but not much there. Good stop made by Tyree Turner up front. Zach Befford up there in the middle of that defensive line, playing tough, getting some push. The comeback route and caught by Tyron Johnson, the transfer from LSU, close to the sticks. Third down and short coming up for the Cowboy offense. South Alabama playing with a little bit of cushion right there. Easy throw for Mason Rudolph. Excellent throw from the far hash on the comeback route. That's an NFL throw. Makes him all the time. That's his that's his that's his go to throw. He's money on that throw. Keeping it on the ground to move the chains with Hill. First down. I was really impressed with Justice Hill last week. You know, a true freshman last year. He's a freshman all American over eleven hundred yards, but he was a little slight. Put on fifteen pounds of muscle. His lateral quickness is even better. I think a big year on the horizon for Justice Hill. To the outside for Johnson. Great block out on the perimeter. And a first down for Oklahoma State. Zach Crabtree, the right tackle, made a great perimeter block there. Love when the big uglies get up to the second level and they chop down defensive backs. A little screen set up. And a great block by Crabtree. Rudolph on the slant. Another first down for Johnson. Down to the 34. Just beat Darian Mills on that coverage. Washington one on one at the top of the formation. That's where Rudolph's looking. And that's who Rudolph has. What a great adjustment by Washington to set up first down and goal. And for me, that's what makes him special. His concentration, his ability to adjust to the football in the air. Watch him, slows himself down, gets both feet in. That's a Sunday catch, Adam. Yes, sir. Two feet inbounds for James Washington. Play action, Rudolph. Touchdown, Rudolph, to Marcel Aikman. Oklahoma State carving up this Jaguar defense in the first. This has been some impressive two-drive stretch for Oklahoma State.
Average better than 10 yards a pop on that drive, and they have a 17 to nothing lead. The folks at Ladd Peebles are somewhat distraught, and I get the feeling that if you see this Oklahoma State offense as the year goes on, a lot of coaches are going to have the same look on their faces. What did Joey Jones tell us before this game that we got ready for? One of the best offenses I've ever seen. Most explosive. And we've seen it, right? These last two drives really show you what this offense is capable of. James Washington, he's as good a receiver as you'll find in all of college football. But look at Tyron Johnson fighting off the defender, getting inside, making the tough, competitive catch with a defender hanging on him. Tyron Johnson might end up being the best of the bunch, Mike Gundy told us. And that's a scary thought because I think a lot of people do know James Washington as one of the better receivers in the country. They may not know a ton about some of the other guys. The other guys are really good. We're popping the tape, and you'll get to know this guy. A lot of these guys are really good wide receivers. Seventeen points in under six minutes. That's explosive. Yep. A penalty marker thrown for a procedure penalty. South Alabama will have decent field position to start this series. Free kick out of bounds on the kicking team, number 49. The ball will be placed at the 35-yard line. First down. So, Dusty, South Alabama, which has already used its two quarterbacks over the course of the night tonight, what do you need to see? What do you need to experience in this next series to know that they're still hanging in there. How about a first down? Because they haven't had one yet. Three possessions, three three and outs. They've got to have something to give this offense some rhythm, some momentum, and give them something to look forward to because so far it's been all about this Oklahoma State defense. Nine to nothing in first town so far. It is still Dallas Davis third series for the redshirt junior from Panama City, Florida. Works his way to the 39, does Minter, as we check in with Adnan Vert. All right, Adam, thank you. More uh, college football action for you. Elsewhere, it's Ohio, Ohio excuse me, facing Purdue. It's Elijah Sindelar to Bryson Hopkins, 19 yards to the touchdown. How about the Boilermakers of 10-0, just over four to go in the first. Adam? And then I thought Purdue gave Louisville at least a good push with Jeff Brom as the new head coach last week. Excellent debut for the Boilermakers. Should be a good one against the Bobcats. Ohio, a MAC championship mm -hmm. game participant last year, a division champion under Frank Solich. Nowhere to go for Minter. Jordan Brailford, who is the third defensive end on the depth chart, makes a great play. Yeah. Darian Daniels getting excellent penetration. Jordan Brailford finishing it off. I mean, just outstanding job. Movement up front at the snap, the line slant. You see these guys getting up the field, penetrating. Already four tackles for loss. Oklahoma State likes to do a lot of shifting pre-snap with their line because they're so deep and they like to confuse the offense. Move around, make it tougher on the offensive line, penetrate, be disruptive. Big hit on Dallas Davis to close out quarter number one, Molly. Well, Adam, South Alabama's tired. They're not. They said they're not used to going this fast. They're complaining about the tempo, and they're saying this is the best quarterback they have ever seen. We talked about some of the weather circumstances that have caused havoc in the south and the southeast. This is a very small, minuscule part of it. But these are some of the notable, notable games that have been canceled due to the effects of Hurricane Irma. If you want updated information, you can check out the ESPN app. This story posted earlier in the day. You can take the app anywhere you want to go, and you can have the most up-to-date news on what is going on in the college football landscape frankly unimportant compared to the broader picture of things but it is available to you 
Another outstanding Waitman punt, sending Jalen McCleskey inside his own 10. 49 yarder from Waitman. So Oklahoma State starts this second quarter with a 17 0 lead and Mason Rudolph closing in on Brandon Whedon's all time passing record. Needs just 73 yards to pass Brandon Whedon for the mark. Mr. Whedon sitting home watching the broadcast was texting with me earlier, so I'm sure he's uh, excited for Mason. Is good chance he passes his record here tonight. I'm, I'd be curious how excited he is about that. <laughs> <laughs> Worst starting field position for Oklahoma State from the nine. It's JD King across the 15. Good run on first down. They say records are made to be broken, sure. right? So. Well, Mike Gundy had his record at Oklahoma State when he was the quarterback, and he's seen three different QBs pass him up. Rudolph looking for Johnson. Incomplete. Defensive coordinator Kane Womack told us last week they were in a lot of zone coverage. He didn't like it. That's where they got beat by Ole Miss pretty good. Felt that they were better in man. Been run a lot of man here tonight. Those man coverage right there. And if Mason Rudolph takes a little off that ball, that's six. That's the danger about playing man coverage against these talented wide receivers. South Alabama brings pressure and a sliding grab by McCleskey for a very short game. But will it be enough for the first down? It will depend on the spot here. And indeed, it is good enough at the 19 yard line. Johnson again. One thing about this offense is the fact that Mason Rudolph can really spread the ball out. He has the weapons, but he also has the vision to do so. Because he's not going to lock in on one guy. He's going to identify the matchup. He's going to locate the open man and trust whoever he throws to is going to catch it. Rudolph with a beautiful strike for a first down to Chris Lacey. That's an NFL throw. NFL read. That was his third read on that pass. They're going to rule that Local pass incomplete. Pass Six different receivers have caught a completion, but that pass will be ruled incomplete. Did he complete the process of the catch is the question. I mean, very close. That's In a catch. Initial that, glance that's a to catch. me looks like the control. Yeah, that's, that's a catch. That's a great job by Chris really Lacey using his hands, pass. bring it into his body, and as he rolls, that ball never touches the ground. Did he have possession all the way through the process? Control. See how he tucks it on his side there. He's got he's got control of yeah. that ball. It never touches the ground. Whew, that's an outstanding catch by Chris Lacey. I think that has to be. Overturned. That's a great job by our camera crew here. Yeah, it is. We get a better angle of it here. Now the question, of course, becomes the age-old: Is there indisputable evidence to overturn the call on the field? If I'm in the replay booth, I would overturn that. Totally agree. I think there's clearly plenty of pictures to support that. Doug Linebarger is our replay official part of this SEC crew. Love the concentration by Lacey. Catches it, brings it to his body, and as he goes to the ground, the way he rolls over, the fact that the ball never touches the ground, I love how he pins it to his side there, knowing that the ground is right there. Hmm. Really nice job. By the senior. I think that ball is on his stomach or his hip yeah. throughout the process and the roll. Lacey, a senior out of DeSoto, Texas. Mike Gundy told me last year, you dream of a guy like this to coach because of how much work he puts into every other aspect of being a receiver. Blocks a ton mm -hmm. for the running backs, likes to run routes and practice those routes. He does a lot of the dirty work. 
academic All-American on top of all of that, an industrial engineering and management major. It's a sharp cat, and I think he'll be playing on Sundays. speed I feel like yeah it's it's a catch but we'll see here's the call after further review the ruling on the field stands pass was incomplete third down at that point it's just interpretation how is a replay official in one game going to interpret the call that another replay official in another game might might see it differently I, I just I, I don't agree with it but that is what the replay official believes and he didn't want to overturn the call in the field, and that's understandable. Well, I vehemently, vehemently disagree with it, but you're exactly right. They felt that there wasn't enough evidence to overturn it, so you play the next down. Third down and three. Rudolph with plenty of time and a strike for a first down to Jalen McCleskey out to the 39 in front of Jeremy Reeves. This offensive line is doing an outstanding job Given a nice pocket for Mason Rudolph to deliver the football. Mason finding his targets down the field. The protection so key for this offense and for Mason. That was one of the questions, right? They give up 32 sacks a year ago, worse than the Big 12. Excellent job protecting him here tonight. Justice Hill, a first down into Jaguar territory. Down to the 47. We're early on in the second quarter, but this offense is as good, as explosive, as advertised, Adam. Haven't seen every offense in the country, but, man, you'd be hard-pressed to find one as dynamic with as many playmakers as this Oklahoma State offense. There were two teams in college football last year that had a 4,000-yard passer, a 1,000-yard rusher, and a 1,000-yard receiver. This club and the national champion Clemson Tigers. Except this club has all their guys back. That's right. They lost all their guys, did Clemson. No more Deshaun Watson, no more Wayne Goldman, and no more Mike Williams. Patient run by Hill into Reeves. Third down. Kane Womack didn't want Oklahoma State to come in and run the football. The front for South Alabama doing a good job keeping Justice Hill and the rushing attack in check. But when you load up to stop the run, leaves you more susceptible down the field. Blitz from the Jaguars. Rudolph evading the pressure and finding Hill. A first down inside the 35-yard line. That's what I wanted to see from Mason Rudolph. Pressure in the pocket. He sidesteps it, rolls outside the pocket, and finds his outlet receiver for the first down. That was exactly what a weakness you thought was for Mason Rudolph. He did a great job there. There was not many for him. Yep. Rudolph this time gets taken down as we check in with Molly McGrath. Well, Adam Cole Garvin was told that he would not return with a right ankle injury, but he is not giving up. He's doing everything he can to loosen up that ankle so he can go back in. And Garvin on the sidelines just working it out right now. See him on the bike trying to loosen up. He's been out for the last few series after that ankle started to bother him. Meanwhile, on the other side, Mason Rudolph after he got taken down had the knee brace that he wears on his left knee come off so he is now going to the sideline and Keandre Woodty is going to come in for his first action so out of Bossier City Louisiana the freshman comes out but Oklahoma State's going to use a timeout here and if Mason Rudolph is ready he'll be back on the field Former Big 12 quarterback Jared Stidham, first year starter for the Auburn Tigers. 
Kelly Bryant taking over for Deshaun Watson. Great matchup tomorrow night. Mason Rudolph looks a little bit frustrated. Had that knee brace come off on that last play. Came off the field. Had his helmet back on, but it is Keandre Woodsy into the game. So the freshman from Louisiana will get a crack here. On second down and 11, a give to Justice Hill. The first man there was Chris Henderson to drive him as he works down to the 31-yard line. And just like that, Mason Rudolph will check right back into the game for this third down. No brace on that knee. He does have the wrap on that left knee, but the brace is off. Diving Dylan Stoner for a first down. 11 more yards. Well, Dylan Stoner might be the best route runner and have some of the most sure hands of any of these receivers. I feel like I say that over and over, but the freshman slot receiver, a nice grab. Out to the perimeter for Marcel Aitman. Seven different receivers have caught a pass for Mason Rudolph so far. And he is just 11 yards away from the Oklahoma State passing record. Rudolph will keep it, and that big body gets hit hard by Jimmy Gibson. Third down coming up. Adam Amin, Dusty Dvorak, Molly McGrath, top of the hour in Mobile, Alabama. Highest ranked team to visit this young South Alabama program. 11th ranked Cowboys led by Mike Gundy with a 17-0 start to this game. And third down and six for Rudolph. And a penalty marker is thrown for a false start. False start, number 28 on the offense. Five-yard penalty, third down. That was James Washington, the receiver. Uncharacteristically done by the senior, James Washington. Moved a little bit early. Don't typically see that from him. Fewest penalized team. Least penalized team, beg your pardon, in the Big 12. Fewest penalty yards against last year. Sixteenth play of this Cowboy drive. Rudolph looking to set up the screen for Hill and tossed it too tall. Something that he could improve on, those short intermediate throws. Sometimes he's a little bit off. I think it's his touch. He doesn't know how much to put on the football. It looked like they had the screen set up to Justice Hill. Overthrow to the sophomore running back. South Alabama needed that. Mm -hmm. They needed to get a stop, force a field goal, because it just felt like Oklahoma State with that high octane offense was going, going, going. Illegal substitution is going to get called here against Oklahoma State as Aaron Cochran came Illegal on late. Illegal substitution on the offense. Number 78, five yard penalty, fourth down. This will get Mike Gundy upset. Yep. A false start. You get a, a third and three inside the 20 and a false start, third and five inside the 20, back it up. And you got a pretty makeable field goal, and you back that up. So, a couple of seniors making some untimely penalties. So now it's a 42 yard try for Amendola. Amendola may have pushed it, and he did. A long Oklahoma State series ends with zero points. We'll see if the Jaguars can use that momentum. A disappointing end 
to that drive for Mason Rudolph here in Mobile, Alabama. One of the great historic cities here in the Gulf Coast. ESPN College Football, brought to you by the Lexus High Performance Line. Experience amazing. And Tecate and Tecate Light, born bold. The route to 755 homers began right here in Mobile, Alabama, the birthplace of Hank Aaron, along with a slew of Hall of Famers, including my guy Billy Williams, the great Satchel Page as well. The Mobile Bay Bears play at Hank Aaron Stadium, the affiliate of the Los Angeles Angels of Anaheim. Don't leave out the Wizard. Ozzie I, I Smith. I don't want to leave out the Wiz. Come on, man. Go crazy. Dusty, go crazy. First down at 10. And it is Davis in the game, keeping it. And he gets wrapped up by Osborne for no game. South Alabama, can they move the football? They have not done it yet. Ten total yards right now after that one-yard run. I mean, it's been a dominating performance here early on by this Oklahoma State defense, primarily the defensive line creating penetration, pressure, and really suffocating the South Alabama offense. Davis on the slant to Jamarius Wayne. If they are going to get back in this game, it's got to be through this guy here. He's the best weapon this offense has. 6'4", 215. This is a wide receiver that we could be seeing playing on Sundays. He's got fantastic speed. And look at the hands. Coming into traffic, catching the ball. Nice yards after the catch for the South Alabama. First first down of the game. Wanted to take some shots to Jamar Jamarius Way in this game. We haven't seen that yet. Deep out and nearly intercepted by Ramon Richards. The former cornerback turned safety. Nearly stepped in front of Sam Harris for a pick. For South Alabama, just its third game ever against a top 25 team. A win against San Diego State last year. Jamarius Way is the guy. Originally signed a letter of intent with Bethune Cookman. Ended up at a junior college for a couple of years. A late qualifier. Ended up here. At South Alabama, serious potential for Way. Davis, deep ball. Caught by Sam Harris. Another first down for the Jaguars to the Oklahoma State 41. This is the number two target on the South Alabama offense. 5'7", he's 180. Not a big guy, but man, he's tough. Great hands and a skilled route runner. The former walk-on has earned his way here at South Alabama in a go-to target for this passing attack. Davis trying to step away from the pressure and got spun down by Enoch Smith. Jordan Brailford, one of the backup defensive ends, doing a nice job tonight. Look at the spin move coming back inside, flushes the quarterback up. Allowing well, Bundage to come make the big hit here in the run game. Inside the tackle, he rips up and he gets a nice tackle for loss. Highlighting somebody that may not get the credit in the scorebook for the tackle, for the TFL, for the sack, but making it happen for others around him. Trey Minto. Good hit by Chad Whitener, the inside linebacker. Big 12 second teamer with the stop. And that's not easy. Minter, second leading rusher in all of junior college a season ago. He's got great quicks, excellent in the open field. Chad Whitener, excellent tackle out in open space with a guy that can make a lot of people miss. Whitener, third year as the middle linebacker after transferring from Cal. 
was a walk on initially at Oklahoma State and earned a scholarship for the 2015 season. Always in the right spot. Yeah, I mean, you pop the film in. Not the most athletically gifted guy, but always around the football. Davis rifles it, and it's caught by Jordan McCray, and he has the first down. That easily could have been an incompletion. It easily could have been five, and he muscled it for 12. It was good pressure inside. Osborne gets there, a very contested throw on the slant. McCray climbs the ladder, makes the catch, and gets enough to move the chains. First time we've seen the South Alabama offense have any life whatsoever. Three double-digit yard completions on this series. Minter stopped cold by Justin Phillips. A loss of four. That is already six tackles for loss for this Cowboy defense. The speed we've talked about, this is just an excellent job getting downhill and making a play on the football. Mike Gundy was telling us he felt like this was as, as athletic and fast a defense as he's had here at Oklahoma State. Davis finds Wade. Jamarius Wade close to the sticks, and he has the first down. Glenn Spencer dialed up pressure from the field. Davis finds way in man-to-man -man coverage. Jamarius Way working over on Bradarius Williams, the freshman quarterback. By far and away the best drive we've seen so far from this offense. Davis coming in here making some throws on this drive, Adam. Still dealing with that shoulder issue. And to come in for Cole Garvin tonight, who's dealing with a right ankle issue. And remember, Garvin is officially out for the rest of this game. Johnson makes one man miss. Ramon Richards missed the tackle. And Johnson able to take advantage. Well, Xavier Johnson has speed when he gets to the perimeter, the ability to make you miss. And the former cornerback, now turned safety, Ramon Richards, comes down and misses the tackle on the sidelines. his footing and lost yardage back to the 14 third down coming up here it's a big part of what they like to do they run the toss to the running back so they fake the toss and run the quarterback counter Dallas Davis unable to keep his feet you know another thing Adam with this drive that clock's running and what they tell us they want to take every single second off the play clock to help that defense and keep that Cowboy high octane offense over on the sidelines at bay. They're milking this clock as far down as they can. Third and five. Davis into a tight window, and Ramon Richards made a great play to knock that ball away. Fourth down and five for South Alabama. Dallas Davis fakes the toss into the boundary, steps up, tries to find his target, Sam Harris, and good coverage by the senior, Ramon Richards. Gavin Patterson is a good short yardage field goal kicker. This from 31. 
Patterson. And Gavin Patterson unable to connect. The best South Alabama drive of the day comes away empty. And the Cowboys still have kept the Jags off the board. I'm Adnan Nambur coming up on our halftime report. Jesse Palmer and Joey Galloway, they'll break down the brilliance of Mason Rudolph, not only tonight for Oklahoma State, but over his career and why he's one of the best the Pokes have ever seen. Also, Oklahoma and Ohio State, the guys will give their pick who wins that game, plus a good one brewing. Auburn and Clemson. All that more coming up on the halftime report. Now back to Adam and Dusty. More Billy Williams talk, I mean. <laughs> I'm sorry I couldn't get a good Joe Carter story in there for you, and then, but uh, still all Oklahoma State, 17-0 lead. Mason Rudolph getting set to take the field once again, inching ever closer to Brandon Whedon's all-time passing record. And we'll step aside momentarily as the Cowboys get set to take the field. It's been that type of night so far for the Jaguars. Mason Rudolph, one pass could put him at the top of the Oklahoma State record books. And a minute 17 and two timeouts starting this drive from the 20. Justice Hill. Ripped down by Finesse Middleton, the former Louisville Cardinal. Rudolph for the record, and he's got it. Chris Lacey with the catch, and Mason Rudolph has become Oklahoma State's all-time passing leader. Brandon Whedon's record is no more. It's now Mason Rudolph sitting atop the charts in Cowboy history. Congratulations to Mason Rudolph. And that number, Adam, it's just going to keep going up and up throughout the course of this season. This is just the start of his senior year. Rudolph, another one to Lacey. Into Jaguar territory at the 48. Nice pass over the middle, deep dig, but excellent protection by the offensive line. Plenty of time again. And Hill puts a shoulder down and out of bounds into Bobby Flock. A dozen more there. Mason Rudolph's doing an excellent job going through his read progressions. He went over to James Washington, number one. It wasn't there. Finds his outlet and his running back, Justice Hill. Blitz from the Jaguars gets picked up and Rudolph a little too much looking for McCleskey. And that looked like it was a sure six. That's what Mason Rudolph doesn't miss on very often. He wishes he could have that one back. And Jalen McCleskey up to scene wide open as he gives a pump fake to the field. Goes back to his receiver just over the outstretched hands of Jalen McCleskey. Blitz off the corner. Rudolph launches it away. Boy, Malcolm Bugs brought some heat initially on Mason Rudolph. And he had Bull Barge rushing in on him. Barge comes untouched. Mason Rudolph, as we said, 6'5", 230. Nice job feeling at the last moment. Barge couldn't get the big body down, and Rudolph smartly throws it away to avoid the sack. You don't want a guy named Bull coming at you at <laughs> no, that you velocity. Oh, you don't. You got some good names in this game, Dusty. We might have to dive into them a little bit. Rudolph, underthrown, looking for eight men. That'll bring up fourth down. Finesse Middleton with a nice rush, a twist. He comes from outside, comes inside. 
He comes clean, rushes the throw for Mason Rudolph, doesn't allow him to step into it and deliver the pass on time to Marcel Aitman. Another strong name, Finesse Middleton. Amendola good from 31, missed from 42. You don't want to be a football player with an name Finesse. You, know I mean? you don't like that? Yeah. I, I thought he rolled with it pretty good. 53 yard attempt potentially for Amendola. And Joey Jones will use one of his timeouts here. This will be a 30 second timeout. I'm surprised you don't like finesse, man. Well, I'm, I'm he's a little a disappointed. Come on, he's a D lineman. I mean, I think I'm supposed to be rough. I like supposed the, to be tough. I like the juxtaposition of it. I, I I had to I have to point out my favorite one though, and I'm gonna steal steal your pen here. Okay. By far, this bad boy right here. <laughs> That's the one. That's the one you need to know. Illinois State's freshman, Kobe Buffalo Meat. Best name in college football. Those are all great ones, but Kobe Buffalo Meat, hands down, best name in college football. Now, is that like Kobe Beef, so it's like the double meat? I think so. I think that's exactly what he Kobe was thinking. Kobe no, Buffalo I, I, Meat? I think, I think it's straight up Kobe Buffalo Meat. That's pretty good. Very, very good. This would tie a career long for Matt Amendola. Johnson is back at the end zone in case it falls short. He's got the accuracy and he drilled it. Matt Amendola ties his career high with a 53 yarder. I walked around pregame. I was out there watching the kickers kick and I walked over the special teams coach and I said, How far can he kick it? He said, He's all day from 55. And I said, Really? And he said, absolutely. And I watched him drill him from over 50 over and over. Slight breeze at his back. Man, excellent kick by Amendola. He had a 53-yarder last year against Central Michigan. It was the longest field goal made by a kicker in the Big 12. And that one split the uprights. And there is Mason Rudolph, who on that last series set the new Oklahoma State passing record. They can make every throw on the field, and that's the record to Chris Lacey. Go out route on the sidelines. He comes back to him again on the dig. Like the check down. Goes off a number one, comes back to his second outlet receiver. He's showing you a little bit of everything, Adam, and the ability to evade the rush, which coming into tonight was a question mark I had. Two things that you told us when we watched film on Mason Rudolph, evading the pressure, resetting himself and being able to connect with the receiver and the short stuff. Both of those things have been bad at times tonight, but really good at times tonight as well. And when we say that, those are two things that he can fine tune because everything else is great. The deep ball accuracy is there. We've talked about his, his frame, how smart he is, such a student of the game. You know, I was talking with Mike Yersich before before the game started down there. I said, what's different? You know, what's he, what's the improvement from junior to senior year? And he just talked about his work ethic in the film room and especially at practice. He is a guy that always has to have it right. He is a perfectionist. And if it's not done right, he doesn't wait for Mike Yersich to ask for him to rerun the play. He just takes it upon himself and takes command and runs it till they get it right. South Alabama got down 10 to nothing last week in Oxford and they were able to come back and at least tie the game. Nothing like that happening so far tonight. Mason Rudolph atop the record books and Oklahoma State up 20 to nothing at halftime. Adnan Virk, Joey Galloway, Jesse Palmer, so much Canada back in the studio right now. Boys, halftime reports yours. Adam, one might say not nearly enough Canada, but I appreciate that. No, 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 that. no. no. <laughs> never, Believe me, it's plenty enough Never Canada. enough, eh? Never enough. If Tim Hortons wants to sponsor us, I mean, I'm just saying. <laughs> yeah, triple, triples. <laughs> Mason Rudolph, fantastic so far. Speaking of triples, triples, he's put up a lot of yardage, a lot of numbers over the years. In terms of yardage overall, about to be the all-time leader in Oklahoma State history. In fact, Mike Gunny, the coach, has 28 wins. Rudolph's at 23 wins. But what do you think of when you think of this young man, the numbers he's put up? You think about what he's been able to do with this offensive system uh, and the way he's able to go downfield. When you watch him play, you know that there is going to be these deep throws, 
downfield, and he can do it with anybody. And in this year, he has Washington as, as his wide receiver. It is a guy that can score from anywhere on the field. Doesn't have to always go deep. He can go underneath. He can catch a slant and take it 70 yards. And the fact that he has completed balls to seven different guys tonight lets you know he is in command of this offense and can spread the ball around. We keep talking about the offense all the time when we're talking Oklahoma State. I've been impressed watching their defense, though, through the first game and a half, because that was the big question mark coming into this year. They had to replace a lot of guys in the middle of that defense, guys like Vincent Taylor at defensive tackle. In this game, their D-line looks pretty good. I mean, they're getting some penetration. They're showing some quickness and athleticism. Six tackles for loss so far. Now, obviously, they're going to play better offenses in the Big 12. They'll play against more mobile quarterbacks. But this year, if this defense ends up being a unit that can win on third down, get off the field, give the ball back to Mason Rudolph, create some turnovers, give the ball back to Mason Rudolph, with that offense they have, watch out. For good reason that their offense has received much acclaim. We'll see if the defense can pick it up. ESPN College Football Primetime on a Friday night. The last appetizer before a huge weekend. And a big Saturday night. The number 11 team in the country on top of South Alabama. 20 to nothing. Tempo for Oklahoma State. The name of the game. Mason Rudolph has been sharp. And defensively, Oklahoma State stifling against South Alabama. Adam Amin, Dusty Dvorak, Molly McGrath getting set for the second half. South Alabama will have the football to start the third. A good return man is Xavier Johnson. Get something going for the Jaguars. He can get something going for the Jaguars. Two kick return touchdowns in Johnson's career. An excellent return inside the 30. There is a penalty flag thrown back near the 35. Exactly what South Alabama needed to start the second half. It's Xavier Johnson, the senior running back, using the speed, excellent blocking. During the return, holding number 24 on the receiving team. And it's coming back. Penalty is 10 yards from the spot of the foul. First down. It was a 74-yard return, but that holding penalty is going to negate. All for naught. It'll be from the spot of the foul. There is the hold against Taji Stewart. She's got that left hand outside the shoulder. The defender tries to pull away, and you can see the jersey stretch. And as they go to the ground, draws the easy flag. So they'll start this drive from the 23 in their own territory instead of inside the Oklahoma State 30. Mm. And that's where Dallas Davis, the redshirt junior out of Panama City, Florida, will start it up. Cole Garvin, who beat Davis for the starting job this season, was hurt. In the first quarter, a right ankle injury has forced him out of the game, and it's been Davis ever since, last year's starter. Penalty flag is thrown as Minter takes a big hit from Whitener. Another penalty marker comes flying in, so we will have to check both markers. Boy, to Quentin Osborne, he had a heck of a first half. Whew. And what he just did there, that offensive lineman, Very impressive. We're going to see a hold here on the offensive lineman. And then that late flag as well on the near side. David Smith is our lead official. Talking with the field judge Andy Britton. There is a video board here at Ladd Peebles and they were showing the replay on the video board so there was a slight reaction from some of the fans who happened to see the last play holding number 76 on the offense personal foul targeting number one on the defense those fouls offset we'll review the targeting foul so 
the penalties for personal foul and for the holding will offset but because there is a targeting penalty involved this will always be reviewed Calvin Bundage is number one for Oklahoma State who got tagged with it and based on the initial look he led with the crown of the helmets So the replay booth will get a couple of looks at this regardless of whether or not Minter put his head down bondage led with the crown of his helmet now the other thing to keep in mind here though Minter is not a defenseless player he is in the act of running it is forcible contact above the shoulders against a defenseless player or forcible contact with the crown of the helmet and it fits the second axiom of targeting not necessarily the first because the runner is not defenseless but the second part of that any forcible hit by the crown of the helmet could potentially be tagged on bondage here by the letter of the law it seems like this is going to hold because as you saw bondage come in the head goes down and that is the the crown of the helmet do you see a bit of a thrust there to any type of indicator that's the term we use that also needs to be applicable to the penalty there needs to be some kind of indicator whether it's a launch or a thrust officials have to look for that as well to me this is a football play I mean this is tough right you got a five foot eight five foot nine running back on the perimeter and you've got a you've got Calvin Bundage coming in just trying to finish the tackle uh, to me that's that's a that's a tough football play but letter of the law it's probably gonna hold and here that's the, I want to go back to that point the letter of the rule the letter of the law the point of this rule is to try to force defenders to not yeah. put their heads down to not lead with the crowns of their helmet so that's why the rule has been implemented these last few years now the other caveat to this if bondage is ejected yeah he was already taking the spot of the outside linebacker Kenneth Edison Magruder mm -hmm. their starter who was hurt during practice in Stillwater this week so bondage was supposed to take a majority of the snaps and has so far tonight get a great look at it here letter of the law if I'm I didn't see the indicator necessarily I didn't see a launch or a thrust but that is completely up to the interpretation That's of exactly the replay right. boot so it doesn't matter if I didn't see it or you didn't see it after further review the ruling on the field stands number one for Oklahoma State is disqualified so it's a second half penalty so not only is he disqualified for this game but he is disqualified for the first half of Oklahoma State's game in Pittsburgh Man, next week that is a devastating loss for Oklahoma State not necessarily tonight but as you say going on the road next week to Pitt we don't know the health status of Magruder and now all of a sudden if you're out bondage you're really getting to the depth of the defense for the Cowboys yeah. And again, letter of the law, it's right. And I'm all about player safety. But man, there's an element. This is a contact sport. He's flying downhill. And the game happens so fast. That is so tough for a defender in those situations. Kirk Tucker takes the spot left by the ejected bondage. Excellent pursuit out on the perimeter for Oklahoma State by Thabo Waniki. So Bundage has to leave the field of play now as well. He's going to head back towards the Cowboy locker room. Sophomore out of Edmond, Oklahoma. And he's known for being that big hitter. Like that, that's, that's, what, that's what makes him a guy that you put on the field. Flies around with reckless abandon, delivers those big punishing hits. Davis flushed. Davis on the move gets back towards the 30 tackled by Rodarius Williams after a gain of six going back to the first half Adam South Alabama put together that one nice drive aside from that all three and outs 
So big third down here for the South Alabama offense to start this second half with some type of momentum. Just two for 16 on third down. That one extended drive led to a field goal attempt that was missed by Gavin Patterson. Joey Jones will use a timeout here. Timeout, South Alabama. We'll take it with him. Bundage is done for the night with the targeting penalty. Also ineligible for the first half at Pitt next week. Saturday night, football presented by Wells Fargo. Top five matchup again on Saturday night. Number five, Oklahoma headed to the horseshoe to take on second-ranked Ohio State, 7.30 Eastern on ABC and the ESPN app. It's going to be a good one, Adam. Our man Dusty Dvorak on ESPN Radio with the call tomorrow night as well. Davis's receiver fell down. It's intercepted by A.J. Green, but a penalty marker was thrown. Green gets hit hard, loses the football. Loose back near the 25-yard line. And after all that, we have a ton to sort out. A.J. Green with what would be his first career interception pending this penalty marker. We saw a receiver fall down to the ground. Will there be any type of interference call involved with that? Or was, potentially a holding? There was contact. Jamar Jamarius Way was down. I guess as we're going to see either a holding or a pass Holding on the defense, number four. Penalty is 10 yards from the previous spot. Automatic first down. Yeah, you called it right there. It's a holding. Before the pass was released, the contact was made. A.J. Green, the sophomore, making his second start. Yeah. You know, use that right arm. Hook the shoulder, easy call for the official. So a fresh set of downs and the ball spotted at the 40 yard line for Dallas Davis. Lost the football at the 43-yard line. Cowboys feel like they have it, and they do. To Quinton Osborne, the senior from Grand Prairie with the fumble recovery. To Quinton Osborne's been all over the field. Look like Cole Walterscheid with the strip. And this guy, the record setter, he's pumped up. He wants some more. He takes the field next. ESPN College Football, brought to you by Mitsubishi Motors, a century of innovation. If you ever come down to Mobile, Alabama and sample some of the cuisine, hmm. very Cajun heavy cuisine, that's because Mardi Gras first began in Mobile. Mobile was actually the first capital of French Louisiana in the early 1700s, 100 years before the Louisiana Purchase. This was the capital of the French territory. And it's got that Cajun flavor to it. The gumbo here is fantastic. Very I'm going to be impressive. sad to leave. Very impressed. Been living on gumbo for three days. <laughs> It's the right way to live, as hey. far as I'm concerned. Man. You talked about it before we went to break. Mason Rudolph, the new all-time passing leader in Oklahoma ah. State history. Another strong and efficient night at the helm for the Cowboy offense. And his 21st completion on 30 attempts. Another one to Marcel Aitman for a first down. Easy pitch and catch for Mason Rudolph. It's a simple out route. They're giving cushion outside. And Mason's taking advantage. Hasn't thrown an interception since the Kansas State game last year when he had two. Mason Rudolph is from Rock Hill, South Carolina. So I'm sure if you're a Clemson fan, if you're a Gamecock <laughs> fan, you're going, how did we miss on this guy? He had an eight touchdown game in the state championship at williams Bryce Stadium. How do you miss on this guy? Is the question that I'm sure a lot of those folks are asking. Here's Washington on the reverse. And he'll step out near the sticks. 
They said he was a system quarterback, Adam. That was the question. Was it the system? Was it the quarterback? He's proven he's one heck of a quarterback since he's been at Oklahoma State. Ran a very similar offense in high school to what he runs here at Oklahoma State. Eight men, touchdown. Oklahoma State on target, on point, all night long. As you're going to see, it's an RPO, run pass option. We've got, we've got linebackers stepping up, safety stepping up into the hole right there. Mason Rudolph's going to see it. He's going to step up, and he's going to hit Aitman on the slant with nobody in the middle of the field. The RPO game has been on point for Oklahoma State tonight. The Jaguars had some trouble with that against Ole Miss, having some trouble with that tonight, too. Clearly something Mike Yersich identified watching the film. The run pass options were really messing with the Oklahoma State defense or with the South Alabama defense, and Oklahoma State's taking advantage tonight. Marcel Aitman missed all of last season with that broken foot. Man, he's happy to be back. A couple of scores from Rudolph tonight. Take it to some of the best Big Ten atmospheres in the country. Eighth ranked Michigan hosts Cincy. Fourth ranked Penn State in their rivalry against Pitt. Second ranked Ohio State in the rematch against fifth ranked Oklahoma. What is that, about 300,000 plus fans combined between those places? A triple header on ABC tomorrow. Let's take it back a decade. Something pretty interesting happened then that affected college football. Come after me! I'm a man! I'm 40! And what's happened since then? We've seen the iPhone. Well, I thank goodness for that. <laughs> My man PJ Carlissimo took the Seattle Sonics to Oklahoma City. Uber was actually launched in 09, and Snapchat was actually launched in 2011. And by the way, uh, Nick Saban has still won a lot of games, and Mike Gundy has aged 10 years and doesn't look like it, and has thrown a mullet. That's a pretty packed run over the course of the last decade. And the success of this Oklahoma State program has really stuck out to a lot of folks in college football since that rant, September of 2007. Mike Gundy has taken this program to heights it's never seen before. Davis under pressure and just swallowed up. Kirk Tucker leading the way. There is the mullet man himself. Some of the great ones. I mean, U.S. Open's going on right now. You got Andre, Billy Ray. you see. The achy breaky heart. Bono. That looks, that's before Joshua Tree, I think, for Bono. <laughs> the Boz. And I know you were, you, you were a big fan of the Boz as well, fellow Oklahoma Sooner. Let's go to the Prime Minister of Great Britain, Tony Blair. Ooh, that's... That's, that's a combo right there. That's legit right there. This was under debate for a little while. Yeah. Ziggy Stardust? Not where, I mean, we have some of the members of our crew saying, you know, I don't know. I don't know if that's a mullet. Second down and 20 for Davis. Deep shots, incomplete. Good job breaking that play up by Adrian Baker. You know, my guys over here have, a, have it's, it's not necessarily called the mullet. This is more of the shag, I was told. So Theo had one. Barry White had Ooh, a pretty rocking one, actually, now that I, I get a second look at it's it. Outstanding. Woo. Curl, Lionel man. had the curls going, yeah. which, which I was pretty impressed by. Like 2007, 2008, Kanye had one going, I think, as well. Mike, Mike Gundy might have the most popular current mullet well, of he, anybody right now. His actually looks good. All those other ones that you kind of look at. Ooh, what is he doing? Dude, a, little, uh, a little nutty, a little crazy going on over there. Gundys are kind of like, ooh. It's not half bad. I kind of like it. Well, Molly was talking with Mike Gundy earlier today. Molly got, like, up close and personal when she was interviewing Mike Gundy. And, like, she got to experience the mullet itself. Yeah, he got a trim a couple weeks ago, but it looks really fresh at him. I asked him <laughs> if he uses any product. He says he uses butch wax, which I have no idea what that is, but I know Dusty knows what that is. Well, I've got plenty of butch wax. If you don't, uh, hey, Seriously. Come to Oklahoma if you want to get some good hair products. <laughs> Is it hog based? Did you catch the? Did you hunt the hogs? And is it? I, I, there's secrets, Adams, that I just can't. You just won't like. You know, okay, I, 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 I got to keep some stuff close to the vest. I'm sorry. 
Good kick coverage here for South Alabama. Excellent job by Bobby Flott. Oh, look at this. Yes. Yes. I wanted it. Okay. And we got it. And now the country gets to experience it as well. That's I was, my man, Dusty. I was going to say, I was uh, a man with uh, quite the mane back in the day, so I can appreciate Mike Gundy's hair and anybody that wants to try to pull off a, a, a long hairdo. <laughs> It's, it's a little different little, looking now. A little, little slightly different Just now. Just a little bit. I had the, uh, the the worst I got, I had the Sean Hunter Boy Meets World part down the middle. Gundy, though, obviously we, we can laugh about it. We enjoy it. Everybody seems to enjoy it. He seems to enjoy joking around about it and embracing it. But at the end of the day, since that rant in 2007, this program has turned around. And I'm not saying it's the rant that did it. But it's certainly a fun turning point to look at and realize that this program has launched ever since that moment and that loss to Troy and that week against Texas Tech a decade ago. Well, that rant was him defending a player. He didn't feel that an article was fair, so he came after uh, a journalist. And I think that that starts to prove to players, man, this coach cares about us. Sure. He's all in for us, so we're all in for him. And I'm not saying it's just the rant, but it's amazing since that rant the level of success they've had at Oklahoma State under Mike Gundy. Yeah, Dusty, that helped with recruiting, but Mike Gundy has gone on the record to say, I'm a man, I'm 40 is the best thing to happen to Oklahoma State football. It put them on the map, it made them relevant, and now his newest marketing ploy is that mullet. And that's right, Molly. I mean, it is marketing strategy. It is marketing. It's a way that this Oklahoma State football team can get some notoriety around the country because for whatever reason, they don't always get that. So whether it's a coach's hair or he's in a singlet or he's hunting rattlesnakes, any way to get eyeballs on Stillwater and actually get people to take a look at the quality football they've been playing, I think it's a win. Well, remember what happened that week. He replaced Bobby Reed yep. with Zach Robinson, who ended up being the all-time passing leader in Oklahoma State history. Washington from Rudolph with a penalty marker thrown on that deep shot from the new passing leader in Oklahoma State history, Mason Rudolph. It's on the defense, number 18. Penalty is 15 yards from the previous spot. Automatic first down. There's some of the great all-time rants that we, we kind of collectively came up with in the last decade. I love, I'm a, I'm a big, that's my quarterback guy. I can appreciate that. Yeah. Fake tears or not, doesn't matter to me. They were fake tears, I'm just going to say. <laughs> I was a big fan of the, uh, the Mike Singletary rant. Okay. I want winners, he said, as he banged the desk. Yep. That's whenever he pulled Vernon Davis off the field. That's right, it was Vernon Davis. Now, still with the Washington Redskins. Eight men on the slant. What a catch. Mm. Big time hit from the NFL prospect, Jeremy Reeves. Close to the 10-yard line. Oh, wow. Strong. Strong, guys. Wow. Well done. Who is that guy? Well done. Slightly different look now. Here comes Rudolph with that big body into the end zone for a touchdown. Mason Rudolph with another rushing touchdown. That's the ninth of his career, and most of them have come over the course of the last seven or eight games dating back to last season. We don't always see Mason Rudolph try to hit the edge, but man, he uh, made the right read and took it to the end zone. Mason Rudolph's mom, Jamie, was a track star at Liberty. I don't think he necessarily <laughs> has Jamie's speed, but... <laughs> As you said, Dusty, this dude has an NFL-ready body. He used it on that play. Mason Rudolph, an unorthodox touchdown for him. A little zone read. He says, I got wheels, baby, <laughs> to the edge. Tyron Johnson escorts him into the end zone. Mason Rudolph. Mel Kuyper's number one quarterback among seniors, along with James Washington, who is Mel Kuyper's number one wide receiver among seniors. Those two coming back for their senior seasons together. 
And they have both made another significant impact here in week two. A 34-0 lead. And they're both going to be guys that are going to be playing football for quite some time. Only helping their stock here early on two weeks into this season. Xavier Johnson forced to take the touchback. Listen, we've gotten to enjoy and have some fun at the expense of Dusty's hair and my hair. <laughs> Molly McGrath oh, bringing it. Yeah. The old school, oh, the man. old school photo, which was not really that old school when we really <laughs> think about it. The ribbon in the hair is what really gets it done, Molly. Oh, come on, guys. I didn't have any mullet photos to share, <laughs> so that was the most embarrassing <laughs> thing I could give. But, you know, just like that, I still have the best view in the house. I'm able to be on the field. I just don't have a bow anymore, so thank goodness for that. Yeah. Yeah, I like how the worst photo we could yeah. find of Molly is the nice, pristine yeah. Boston College right. cheerleader photo. We got you all, uh, like the scraggly hair. I'm Awful. interviewing a cat. Yep, that's all I got, guys. That's that. That's that's the comparison here. That's your worst picture, Molly. That's no. it. <laughs> They're worse Must be than nice. just not for TV, <laughs> no. okay? Let's just say that. This score is not safe for TV right now. South <laughs> Alabama <laughs> being shut out by Oklahoma State. The defensive line tonight has been unbelievably impressive. They've changed the line of scrimmage. They pressured the quarterback, tackles for loss. And now on the second level, Mike Gundy told us this is a fast athletic defense, and they've shown that here tonight. Sideline to sideline, right. just flying around the field. Right back to Minter. Now, this has been a tough night so far for South Alabama, but Joey Jones, you have to appreciate what he's done with this program. Just in its ninth year playing college football, they hired him. He's been the only coach. He's the perfect fit for this job. Mobile native, knows the area, grew up in the area. Alabama ties, the Bear Bryant connection, instant credibility, and a guy who really seems to relate well to the people that he wants to bring to his program. He's done a really nice job, what, five years at the FBS level. And he's been to a bowl two out of the last three years. I mean, that's 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 getting it done in a quick amount of time yeah. to completely start a new program from scratch. So he, he even told us he, he can appreciate the job that they've done so far, but he's not satisfied. He thinks that this program can go even further, and you can tell with talking with him, um, he's going to do everything in his power to see that South Alabama continues to improve and continue, continues climbing the ladder. Dylan Stoner's back to return this Corliss Waitman punt. Nice bounce and roll inside the 20. Joey Jones' counterpart is Mike Gundy. Molly McGrath had a chance to go 40 with him earlier today. Coach, you live on a ranch. What's a favorite animal you own? Uh, I, we own a donkey named Black Jack, and, and he's got a really bad attitude, so that's why I like him. Favorite thing to hunt? Dove. Strangest thing you've eaten? Uh, squid. Okay. Uh, how long are you keeping the mullet for? Um, probably a long time now. You know, I have enough people that, uh, that say it look, makes me look a little younger. I need that. <laughs> Any product in your hair? Uh, right now I have a little bit of butch wax just to kind of keep it from falling in my eyes. Butch wax. Okay, one word to describe this Cowboys team. Um, they're special. All right, that's 40 yards with Mike Gundy. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. The word special mm -hmm. seems to apply, and I'm glad he gave butch wax the, uh, the credit that it deserves. He is an interesting cat, though. I mean, the hunting stuff, the hunting stories, loves to dove hunt, uh, as you heard him tell Molly earlier. And I love to dove hunt, so I'm right there with him. I mean, the exotic animals that he has on this farm, it's, it's incredible to really dive into Mike Gundy the man, not just Mike Gundy the mullet, not just Mike Gundy the coach. There's a lot to this guy. And this is who he is, right? He can finally feels comfortable enough to be himself. 
Here's King with a great run out near midfield. You know, Adam, I don't think he was totally honest with me, though. I don't think squid is the weirdest thing he's eaten. <laughs> that guy hunts rattlesnakes. He's definitely tried snake before. I've had rattlesnake sausage. I think that's the most exotic thing I can say I've eaten. I've never had rattlesnake, but I'll tell you what, I'm never afraid to try something once. So you got a rattlesnake handy. I'm let me, ready. Let me uh, let me just go in the back here. Hit up Coach Gundy. He's probably got somewhere we can go hunt somewhere. I was, was going to say probably. Yes. Well, you already ate cheese on national television a week ago, so. It was good cheese, what's, what's man. It was good cheese up in Madison, Wisconsin. Rudolph showing off some movement. Trying to find Lacey on the sideline. Chris Lacey. How many head coaches in college football do you think have their own donkey? <laughs> wow. Molly? Uh, Want to put an over under at like three and a half? We'll see. <laughs> maybe in the, the states of Oklahoma and Texas. <laughs> but I'm surprised <laughs> he said you. his donkey it's because we know he now. has a, a peacock. Yes. He has a tortoise. <laughs> but he loves we'll blackjack because he's mean. I mean, I, I get it. Sweet name, too, by the way. Yeah, it's a strong yeah. name. I was up in Cincinnati earlier this week. I was doing a Reds game. And Zach Cozart is now the proud owner of a donkey as well. The excellent infielder for the Cincinnati Reds. Joey Votto bought him a donkey okay. as a gift for making the All-Star team. So I didn't re I didn't think in one week <laughs> I would meet two people or talk to two people that owned a donkey. It's my new goal in life, Adam. <laughs> Someday I'll get there. Strive high. Strive high, Dusty Dvorak. Third down and ten for Rudolph and the Cowboys. Steps away from that pressure, incomplete for Stoner as it hit the ground. But again, another thing that you liked about Rudolph or wanted to see some improvement on was that evasion of pressure. And he had pressure right in his face up the middle. Easy little sidestep. Allows him to step up in the pocket. Ball slightly underthrown, but still the pocket presence, the pocket savvy to be able to evade the rush, keep his eyes down the field and deliver the football. Saw Mason Rudolph saying, hey, that's a catch. That's a catch. I thought just by naked eye that it was an incompletion that hit the ground. And now the punt unit will come on. Second punt of the night for Zach Siner. He's got his own Heisman campaign going. Five oh nine to play here in the third quarter. All Oklahoma State right now. Mason Rudolph, 335 yards, three touchdowns tonight. Preparation freak, the things that Dusty likes, the deep ball, the struggles evading the pressure. We've, we've seen some flashes of positive in that category tonight. We, we've seen everything from Mason Rudolph. He's been excellent. Heck, he even scored a touchdown on the ground, taking it to the perimeter. But he prepares as well as anybody out there. He's a film room junkie, basically a coach in practice for Mike Yursich. We've seen the deep ball. We've seen the touch he has on passes. He can hit that 10 to 12 yard out from the far hash like it's no problem. Um, and then like you said, some of the only flaws I could find, he's clearly been working on those and we've seen those remedy here tonight. Johnson There's nowhere to go on that Oklahoma State defensive line. Yep. Trey Carter getting out to the perimeter along with Traylon Weber. I think Trey Carter's got a chance to be a really good player inside for Oklahoma State. He was a defensive end. He's moved inside. I think he's a great athlete. He's got good hands. He plays a little high, so I see Lyman get into his chest, but once he figures out exactly the pad leverage to play with inside, I think he's got a chance to be a good one for the Cowboys. Got to get a little lower, is that what you're telling me here? Playing too high. Okay. Biggest, one of the most important things, defensive line, especially inside, pad leverage. Keep them low. Davis, that pass is deflected. Nearly intercepted by Carter. It is intercepted by Phillips, and it's punched home for another Cowboy touchdown. What a moment for Justin Phillips. The defensive tackle, Darren Daniels, he makes this play. Excellent pressure inside. So he gets the big bear paw on the football. 
Look at him push, push, get those hands off of him, keep working, gets his hand up. And Justin Phillips, the recipient of a walk-in touchdown. Phillips will get the praise, but Darian Daniels made the play. 41 to nothing. Redshirt Jr. out of Pearland, Texas, with the score after some great push up front. Darian Daniels, he can be a beast inside. Really good push. Initially blocked, but he keeps working. He keeps fighting. Gets his hand up. Trey Carter says, I got one. But then it's Justin Phillips. Ball falls into his hands. Johnny on the spot. Breaks a tackle and takes it in for six. Good hands there by Phillips. Daniels, a four-star prospect out of Dallas, Bishop Dunn High School. Dad Tony left a big impact on him. A former Texas Tech Red Raider, played for the Packers in the NFL. And remember Vincent Taylor, the outstanding defensive tackles in the NFL right now. They've been needing someone to step up inside, get that inside push, that inside pressure. I think that guy's Darian Daniels. Vincent Taylor, sixth round pick of the Miami Dolphins. Of course, they will not play their opening week game against Tampa Bay due to Hurricane Irma. Minter, out across the 20. That ball come loose at the end, he was down. Four minutes to play here in the third as we check in with Mal. Yeah, uh, Mason Rudolph not acting like Oklahoma State is up 41 points. He's been going up and down the sidelines, yelling at his team to keep their energy up. He even yelled uh, some corrections to his offensive line. He was really upset about that incomplete pass in that last drive. So you can tell things are a little slow down here. It's a little quiet. He's trying to keep their energy up. That just goes to show the leadership that Rudolph has on this team. The grandson of a preacher. The son of a former football player at North Carolina. His dad, Brett, was a Tar Heel. Mentioned his mom, Jamie, a track stud at Liberty. And his younger brother, Logan, he's going to be on the field in Death Valley tomorrow night. A freshman defensive end for the Clemson Tigers as they get set to take on Auburn this weekend. What a slate of games we have this weekend. Cool. Last weekend was incredible. This weekend's going to be incredible. College football's back, man. Johnson with a good run. Johnson takes it out across the 40-yard line. Well, this is an awesome time to be an American tennis fan, especially on the women's side. Madison Keys battling back from the wrist injury. Sloan Stevens battling back from foot surgery. Great friends, incredible, great young female tennis players from America squaring off at 4 o'clock Eastern time. The U.S. Open final between Keys and Stevens on ESPN and the ESPN app. Slant dropped by Kawan Baker. Redshirt freshman out of Atlanta. At this point, they're looking for anything they can build on moving forward. Any successes they can have, throwing the football, running the football, just try to get something positive here late in the third quarter into the fourth as they head into next week. Cole Garvin, the starting quarterback, last week winning the job in camp, injured with a right ankle injury in the first quarter of tonight's game. It's been Dallas Davis on the field all night since. Davis underthrown, looking for Jameer Taylor. We talked about Dallas Davis's toughness, though. You can't get past that. It's a really tough dude. Surgery on his torn labrum in January after playing through that injury pretty much the entire second half. Labrum surgery typically requires about an eight to ten month rehab process. And he got back in six months. You know what that's like. Been there, done that. You're right. It is a long, tedious rehab. I think that just speaks to the toughness of Dallas Davis that he was able to get back far more quickly than anticipated. Down goes Davis. Pressure again from this Oklahoma State front. Brailford and Owens off the edges. 
Well, that's the rush guys. They're outstanding off the edge. And, you know, coming in, I said, I want to see these guys get after the quarterback. And it's Brailford. It's Owens. These guys off the edge. Man, they are potent. Speed rushes. No one touches Brailford. He plays off the running back. Jarrell Owens was there at the speed rush. The dominating performance tonight from the Cowboys defensive line continues. Remember, Brailford's the third string defensive end. Now, obviously, they have a speed rush right. package, That's and right. he's going to be a major part of that. But this is a guy who's coming in on third down, fresh legs maybe, amped up. He's got a job. That job is to get to the QB, and he's been doing that tonight. That's exactly right. And they need to see this, right? I mean, because as a player, it's one thing to know you're capable of doing something. It's another thing to go in a game and do it. And once you see yourself do it and feel yourself do it in a game, well, then it allows you, gives you that confidence. It allows you to go out there and play a little bit more fast, play a little bit more free, and that's really when the sacks start to come. With the score being what it is, you do have to wonder how long Mason Rudolph was going to be in this game, and sure enough, Keandre Woodsey is going to check in at a snap earlier when Rudolph had to leave the field. It's the right call by Yersich and Gundy to pull Mason Rudolph. He's had a heck of a night. No reason to run any risk of an injury. What a start mm. to the senior season of Mason Rudolph thus far, along with tonight becoming the all-time Cowboy passing leader. This guy's got to be in the conversation for the Heisman Trophy. He's got just a embarrassment of riches outside at the wide receiver position. They finally got this rushing attack going. Some talent at the running back, so defenses have to be honest. And a guy like Mason Rudolph, who is so well prepared, has all the intangibles and the arm talent to make the throws. It's been a very impressive start to the 2017 season. Uh, there is not 9.38 remaining in this quarter. That's the time here in Mobile, Alabama. We've had some scoreboard and play clock malfunctions. So our great crew backs us up with mm -hmm. a little bit of what you just talked about. This is the ESPN experts poll through just one week. Don't right. freak out just yet if your favorite <laughs> player isn't on this list just yet. Very, very all too early experts poll. But this through one week probably shows off some of the good performances that we saw along with some of the favorites that we might see as the season goes on. How about the state of Oklahoma where I reside? Two quarterbacks. Sure. Both in the Heisman Trophy conversation. It's going to set up for an epic bedlam in Stillwater later in the season. But, man, I mean, all those guys right there. Josh Rosen, what he did the other night sure. against Texas A&M, you got to put him up top yeah. after one week. Well, that after was one week, sure. Comeback. But let me, let me ask you this. In your opinion, it doesn't have to be just based on one week, just right. who you think overall. Who's the best quarterback in Los Angeles right now? Not Phillip Rivers, even though we're going to see him on Monday Night Football. You know, it's, it's such a tough question because... I watched a lot of USC from last year. Well, what Sam Darnold put on the film was outstanding. Sure. So, I mean, I, I still hold Sam Darnold, though he started slow last week against Western Michigan, threw a couple of picks, took him a while to get going. I still think he's unbelievably talented. He's a better athlete than Josh Rosen. Maybe Rosen's the better pure pocket passer. But, man, that, that's a tough debate. I mean, basically, you're, you're right either way you pick because those are two of the best and probably going to be two of the top drafted quarterbacks First pass for Woodsy, and nearly intercepted with a penalty marker thrown. Jeremy Reeves, outstanding safety for this South Alabama defense, nearly had the pick. We'll have to check the marker. Personal foul, face mask on the defense, number 11. Penalty is 15 yards from the previous spot. Down. It's Gus Nave, true freshman out of Scuba, Mississippi. I didn't see the face mask. I didn't really see I don't, much. I don't now, know. I'd say some pass interference potential. There's a lot of contact. but Now, face mask doesn't just apply to the face mask. So if there was any grabbing of the ear hole of the helmet or any other opening, that would count as a face mask. I just didn't happen to see it on that particular play. Woodsy. Promising QB. Bossier City, Louisiana. 
out of Parkway High School. Fascinating young man with his story, born in Japan. Son of Charles and Louisa as part of a military family. So his family stationed in Japan when he was born. He's lived in Japan, Germany, and Louisiana, and now in Stillwater, Oklahoma. Very cultured young man, Adam. By the way, if you're curious how much time is left on the clock, there's a minute and a half to go in this third quarter. All Oklahoma State right now. You know, with Wu Ti, still questions about his passing, better athlete. We've already seen a little bit of quarterback run game sprinkled in. See if he can be a little bit more efficient in the passing game the rest of the way. LD Brown, short of the sticks, hit by Roxell McWilliams, inside of a minute for the third. LD Brown, redshirt freshman out of Dallas. 52 Texas natives on this Oklahoma State roster. That's the most of any team in the country that is not in the state of Texas. So that's a really good recruiting job, granted in a large talent pool right. by Oklahoma State. And let's not forget Oklahoma State 5-2 and two against Texas since 2010, using Texas's, Texas players against the home university. Final seconds of this third quarter. It is a fresh set of downs for Oklahoma State. Full barge heads to the sidelines. 52 for Oklahoma State. Sooners doing a good job there as well, but there's the That's golden the of the hurricane third of Tulsa. Mike Gundy's Stillwater led bunch. He's Oklahoma born and bred. His crew is in full control tonight. 41 nil. Look on the face says a lot about what's happened tonight here in Mobile, Alabama. First meeting all time between South Alabama and Oklahoma State. They'll meet again in Stillwater next year and again in Stillwater in 2023. All Cowboys tonight. Aldi Brown on the move. Keandre Woodtee is the quarterback in the game for the Oklahoma State Cowboys. Mason Rudolph's night is done. Well, Mason tonight made his 30th career start. He's going to move to 24 and 6 as a starting quarterback. And remember, the Cowboy staff burned his red shirt late in the 2014 season. Very controversial at the time, too. A lot of fans did not want him to burn that red shirt. But it led to a huge win late in that season. At that Opening start in the rain on the road at Baylor. Lost that game, but then came back the week after and gets thrown into Bedlam against Oklahoma. That was the Tyreek Hill game, the incredible return late for a touchdown, and Oklahoma State would go on to win that game. They'd win their bowl game, and it was off to the races for Mason Rudolph and James Washington and Brad Lundblade, his center who made his first start that same night against Baylor. This was a group that, when I did their first game in 2015, I had a sense that there could be something special Legal there. formation on the offense, five players in the backfield, five-yard penalty, replay, third down. But, but no guarantee about that. And it all started with a win against a rival. And that's when you knew maybe there's something to this kid. There's a lot to him. I knew when he went on the road in Waco, in the rain, hostile territory, made some big-time plays, this kid's got something to him. Then I watched firsthand live in Norman and Bedlam lead his team to a victory, and you knew this guy was really going to take the next step and take this Oklahoma State Cowboy football team to new heights. 
Yeah, Dusty, I was there for that game on the sidelines. I remember not knowing who was going to start at quarterback that night. And uh, Mike Gundy had said that Mason Rudolph wasn't a good practice player, so he really didn't know what to expect until he put him in that game. So that was a gamble, but it's a gamble he had to take. And, you know, I asked Twitter if they would give up that 2014 Bedlam win for another year of eligibility for Mason Rudolph. And... Uh, People are saying no. 62% wow. of Oklahoma State fans said no, they would rather have that Bedlam win. That just goes to show how much they cherish that win and that rivalry. And also, people were calling for Mike Gundy's job mm -hmm. at that point, mm -hmm. and that kind of revived the program. Yeah, that was the down year in this last five or six year stretch, that 2014 season. That's the athlete would see when he made that. And again, that goes back to show you what exactly what Molly was talking about Oklahoma State fans and obviously it's not the entire fan base but based on what we got information for a lot of these folks would stick with the win rather than th having this quarterback that could be a Heisman Trophy contender for another season that's incredible to me but Bedlam's maybe not, a big maybe, game I was brother. gonna say but maybe it's maybe that makes sense to you pl having played in that rivalry Bedlam is a big game uh, what four out of the last six years it's meant the winner of that is the Big 12 champion yep it's going to be another big one this year. Oklahoma State hasn't had a ton of victories Oklahoma, over Oklahoma in the past, so anytime they get that, that win, they cherish it, no question. What was it, 18 wins, I want to say, for Oklahoma State in That's the right. all-time rivalry compared to almost 90 for Oklahoma? Something in that department, but I'll tell you what, even though Oklahoma has still won a lot of games, a different Cowboy program, a different Cowboy football team, and man, it's going to be fun in Stillwater later in the season because not only they have two of the best quarterbacks in the country, these are by far, in my opinion, the two best teams in the Big 12. It's going to come down to November the 4th in Stillwater. Good, good, good. Third down coming up. Well, our annual week one Monday night football double header comes your way, ironically enough, on Monday. Saints and Vikings, Adrian Peterson switching sides, number two back behind Mark Ingram, now playing for the Saints. Sam Bradford leads the way for the Vikings, vaunted defense for the Denver Broncos with a new head coach in Vance Joseph, taking on the Los Angeles Chargers. I have to work, I have the week four, I have to work hard not to say San Diego Chargers. Monday Night Football is starting up at 6.55 Eastern, Monday night on ESPN and the ESPN app. Well, that was a shocker last night with the NFL getting kickstarted, wasn't it? Well, Kansas City going into New England. That was. I'm not shocked by the defense of Kansas City. I mean, we they knew went they in and won by 15 but points. They, but they went in and won by two scores. I was, that's, that's what I was surprised dang. by. Too bad, by the way, for Eric Berry. Yeah. What a player he is. Just signed that big mm -hmm. contract for 78 million, and the first game out, a guy who's battled through injury, battled through cancer. Ends up rupturing his Achilles, done for the season on that excellent Chiefs defense. Matt Amendola drilled a career-long time 53-yarder earlier tonight. A little bit of a hook, but good to give Oklahoma State a 44 to nothing lead. All Cowboys tonight here in Mobile, Alabama. Back in Mobile, Alabama, as we get our college football look ahead brought to us by Xfinity X1. The ABC triple header taking us through the big time atmospheres in the Big Ten. And of course, Auburn Clemson rematch of last year's game. This time it's in Death Valley. That's on ESPN. What sticks out to you? Well, I'm going to look at Michigan. I'd say the opening week, the team that impressed me the most was the Wolverines. Dismantled the Florida Gators. That defense lost 10 starters. And they look like one of the most dominant defenses in college football. Jim Harbaugh, man, he just reloaded there in Ann Arbor. How much of that, though, is Florida? I mean, those, I mean we, obviously the big storyline is the lack of the shoulder bounces. The ball's loose and recovered by the Jaguars. Well, there's an element of that, but I mean, come on, those guys are on scholarship too. Sure. I mean, if you watch that game, that was a dismantle. I mean, that was an absolute beatdown. I mean, guys like Devin Bush Jr. had a couple of sacks. Rashawn Gary. Former number one player in the country a couple of years ago. He's really starting to come on that defensive line. It's really good. They fly around on the back end. 
And if Will Spades can not turn the football over, you got to remember, he had two pick sixes two pick in that sixes game, in game, and they yeah. still pulled away and won by over two scores. So I thought it would be a bit of a rebuilding year in Ann Arbor. I think I might have been wrong on my preseason prognostication. I think Jim Harbaugh's boys are ready to play right now. Well, I'd be curious how it's going to look against Penn State, against, Penn State, against uh, Ohio State, gotta Michigan play, State. Got to play Wisconsin this year. That's in Madison That's right. this year, later in the season in November. The catch made by Samori Collier. Uh, one game that wasn't on there, uh, Stanford USC. Man. A uh, really important early season rivalry matchup. Obviously, a lot in terms of Pac 12 play starting up. Two teams that have been tossed in the mix as potential college football playoff teams. Contrasting styles, too. I mean, you got one team wants to spread you out, throw it around, and Stanford just wants to pound you. So, you know, really, the last, you know, five to seven years, Stanford has owned this matchup. And with Stanford really coming out of the blocks looking good, solid. Hiller Christ at quarterback, a good offensive line, stout defense as usual. I think they've got a good chance to go in the Coliseum tomorrow and really make that a heck of a game. Okay. Penalty marker thrown after that Jamarius Way catch. USC was unimpressive in their season opener against Western Michigan. Offside on the defense, number 92. Penalty is declined. The result of the play, first down. I'm now, I'll defend Western Michigan in this regard, too. I know P.J. Flex gone, lost Corey Davis, mm -hmm. lost Zach Terrell. Right. But they've got a running game. They've got some dudes on that defense, too. I still think they'll be there at the end in the MAC at when the season uh, or when the championship game rolls around. Rather. USC's a top four team. Though. Okay. Like, I mean, coming That's in, fair. Like, I mean, you know, they, they're supposed to hit the ground running like a lot of teams have. I'm not trying to downplay Western okay. Michigan. I, I'm just saying that for a team with so much preseason hype, I didn't think they fully delivered, at least in week number one. Great chance to bounce back, though, against a quality Stanford Cardinal team. I'm sure our uh, producer, Kim Belton, will be watching that game. He, he may have an eye on his Cardinal. Former uh, Stanford standout in hoops back in the day. We appreciate our producer, Kim. It was a fantastic job, all the guys in the truck. Of our crew here in Mobile, Alabama. We're taking a trip to El Paso, Texas next Friday night. We get a chance to see Rich Rod, the Arizona Wildcats, take on a UTEP team that's trying to improve year in and year out. We're seeing some of the depth of the Oklahoma State defensive line. South Alabama finally starting to get some push, sure. opening up some holes. Get a little drive going. I want to go back to something you mentioned about Dallas Davis, too. Mm -hmm. Lost the starting job. Obviously, he was a starter last year. Had to fix that shoulder. But you said this earlier. He's been Cole Garvin's biggest supporter this whole time. And you have to give a lot of credit to a guy. If he's going to take what role has been given to him and embrace it, I think you have to give a lot of credit to a player like that. It's leadership, man. That's character. It's tough. If you're the guy, especially the quarterback, to then take a back seat and lose that job and stay upbeat, stay a part of the team, and not just stay a part of the team, but embrace your competitor and be his biggest ally and his biggest supporter. So just a great job and some, some true leadership been shown from Dallas Davis. Nice throw on the move to the sideline. Good effort by Jordan McRae, but out of bounds. Jordan McRae, his dad Curtis Brown, four-year wide receiver at Alabama for Gene Stallings. His uncle Charlie Brown was a two-time Pro Bowler for the Washington Redskins as a wide receiver. Won a Super Bowl. Good pedigree. Uncle won Super Bowl 27. As that was played four days after Bear Bryant actually passed away. That Super Bowl was dedicated to the memory of Bear Bryant. Denzel Foster on the carry. Denzel Foster on the carry. 
it was fascinating to listen to Joey Jones tell us the story about how he wound up at Alabama playing for Coach Bryant. Fifty-yard pass the first time he took the field. Unbelievable. From Walter Lewis. That was his quarterback when he took the field for the first time. They ran a wishbone offense. Mm -hmm. So that's a one receiver offense. So he was the fifth string, rather the sixth string guy as a freshman, fifth string guy as a sophomore, and all four receivers in front of him got hurt. So that thrust Joey Jones onto the field as a sophomore to play in Bear Bryant's wishbone offense. First pass he ever caught, 50 yard strike for a touchdown from Walter Lewis. You know what we call that? Making the most of an opportunity, Adam. <laughs> for, you get a chance? Yeah. Go make a play, I, man. Make I, a name for yourself. I dig it. You know, we asked him about his relationship with Bear Bryant, mm -hmm. and he said he took after Bear in the passion that Bear Bryant coached with, but he really takes after Steve Rogers. Who's Steve Rogers? Joey grew up in a bit of a rough household, and Steve Rogers was the man who steered him towards football, ended up becoming his Little League coach. And he says he takes more from Steve Rogers than anybody else in terms of how he approaches coaching, how he approaches the kids he deals with. There's a first down to Jamarius Way. Drive stays alive in the red zone. Nice throw by Dallas Davis. A comeback round the sidelines. Jamarius Way made some nice catches, run some nice routes here this evening. South Alabama has never been shut out. Again, it's ninth season competing in college football, fifth year at the FBS level. They have yet to be shut out. Trying to get on the board late in this fourth quarter. Big hit. Moore got hit hard by Amen Ogbong Benmiga. The redshirt freshman out of Canada, second cousin of a pretty good one, Emmanuel Ogba, yeah. who graduated a couple of years ago, went to the NFL. Early second round pick in the Cleveland Browns. I'll tell you, you know, that toss there is a play that South Alabama loves to run. Yep. But against this speed, I mean, you see right there, it's hard, it's hard against a, a defense like Oklahoma State that can run as well as they do to hit the perimeter. Breaking the tackle, Messiah Francis to the end zone. The junior out of Georgia. Getting South Alabama on the board to avoid the shutout in Mobile. Messiah Francis breaks one tackle. Ooh, lucky that wasn't a block in the back there. But Francis finds the end zone. Finally gets the Jaguars on the board. Strong drive, 83 yards. And they remain a team that's never been shut out. Extra point from Gavin Patterson is good. Jaguars avoid the shutout. If you're unfamiliar with the folks here in Mobile, Alabama, we'll tell you more about this program on the other side. Lithonia, Georgia's own Messiah Francis. Then the Jags on the board, avoiding the goose egg. Cowboys put the finishing touches on a 2 0 start. But for South Alabama, December of 07, the Board of Trustees approved the addition of football, and they went out a few months later and hired Joey Jones, former Alabama receiver. Those first couple of years, they were just playing prep schools and junior colleges. Then they started to play some FCS and D2 schools. The transition over two years into becoming an FBS bowl eligible school. And three Decembers ago, Joey Jones led this team to a bowl game. They went back to a bowl game last year, lost to Air Force in the Arizona Bowl. So two of the last three seasons they played in the postseason. Not an easy thing to do for a program that's less than a decade old right now. I think it's very impressive. And like he told us, they knew going into this game they were going to have their hands full with this Cowboy offense and this Cowboy team. Very complimentary of Oklahoma State. But he even told us 
these two games against Ole Miss, against Oklahoma State, are going to pay dividends later on once we get into some belt conference play. Austin Parker on the return out across the 15-yard line. We will set you up for a tremendous Saturday of college football. We'll put a bow on this one in the Azalea City when you come back. Finish out your night with us. Need that app tomorrow, bud. Cincinnati, Michigan at noon. Pitt, Penn State at 3.30. Oklahoma, Ohio State at 7.30. Saturday on ABC, a great triple header. Also available on the ESPN app. Dusty Dvorak is on his way to Columbus. You'll have the ESPN radio call of Sooners and Buckeyes. What a test for Lincoln Riley, huh? Oh, man. Imagine this. Your first ever road game to go face the number two team in the country. Urban Meyer, probably the second best coach in the last 20 years. And in the horseshoe in front of 100,000, man. Lincoln Riley, Urban Meyer, it's going to be fun in Columbus tomorrow. UTEP is one thing. But uh, right. Ohio State is a whole different animal at their house. Great game last year for the Buckeyes. Yeah, definitely. On the road in Oregon. That was an impressive win. That win catapulted them into the college football playoff. The, the game against, just having Oklahoma on the schedule and being able to get a win in Norman was probably enough. Ironically enough, another game on our triple header. Pitt Penn State. Yeah. Pitt beat Penn That's State right. last year. That might have been the win for the Panthers that kept the Nittany Lions out of the playoff because they beat Ohio State head to head in Happy Valley. Exactly right. Pitt, interesting. They struggled with Youngstown State yep. last week. Penn State came out rolling. Offense, defense. Those rivalry games that are never working out. We'll see Urban Meyer, Lincoln Riley. We'll see James Franklin in action, Pat Narduzzi. Jim Harbaugh, and of course, the protege of Jim Tressel and the Ohio State program, Luke Fickle, going into the big house, a place that he's pretty familiar with, having been the defensive coordinator at Ohio State. Now you mentioned the surprises earlier. We didn't get a chance to touch on it. I was very shocked by Texas and their loss against Maryland. Just not necessarily because of the hype. I didn't know DJ Durkin's team was going to come out and put 51 on the board. And give them credit, right? I Absolutely. Mean, hey, they went on the road. It was almost a three touchdown point spread, heavy underdogs, and they beat up on Texas. They ran the ball for 263 yards, limited Texas to under 100 yards rushing in their own stadium. An impressive win by DJ Durkin, but man, what a tough, what, an, what a, uh, disappointing debut for Tom Herman. Now he had that quote about you know rubbing pixie dust on her or sprinkling pixie right. dust on it and trying to turn things around. Urban Meyer reacted to his former coordinator's comment about that. What do you think about this? I loved it. I got to be honest because you know when I when I heard the Tom Herman comment talking about you know we're not just going to take some magical fairy dust and sprinkle it on top and all the problems are going to go away. I thought in a way that was kind of saying we don't have good enough players yet. And I didn't like that. And I think Urban Meyer read it the same way as me. And he took a couple of shots at Tom Herman. Good tee on the edge to the sideline. I mean, that's a guy that he had in the room every single week, prepping for games, had that great win against Alabama in the playoff a couple of years ago, the first year of the playoffs. So won a national championship together. He, he knows Tom Herman about as well as anybody. Right. So is that kind of the... You know, teacher student type of thing. That's what it felt like a little bit. You remember Tim Beck, last year's Ohio State's offensive coordinator, now down in Austin. So yeah. maybe there's some some uh, rough edges on some of those relationships, but I liked what Urban Meyer had to say. Because when you take over a program, those are your players. You those are your guys and you back them all the time. And whether Tom Herman meant it or not, the way it came off to me, he was kinda acting like he didn't have good enough players yet to get the job done. They've got good enough players in Austin, Texas right now to be able to beat Maryland at home. So to me, that's excuses. Molly said this earlier to us in the week when we were having this discussion. She said, it's not like Charlie Strong left the cupboard bare by any means. Back-to-back no. -back top 10 recruiting classes for Charlie Strong. Well, here in the Big 12 this season, things are 
looking more and more like they may come down and granted it's only a week plus in but it may come down to Oklahoma State and Oklahoma Mason Rudolph against Baker Mayfield come November in Bedlam in Stillwater I'm certainly not going to gauge how a team's going to do over the course of a full season based on two games but the sample size thus far for the Cowboys has been very very impressive Competition picks up a little bit next week, so you get yep. a, a little bit better of a feel for exactly what this Cowboy team looks like, but we know about the offense. We know about the weapons. It was so hype coming in, and they, they validated that. They've lived up to all the hype. Questions I had, offensive line play. Is that defense improved? And through two weeks, they checked all the boxes. But again, as we mentioned, we'll get a better feel as the games get tougher. Pitt next week, TCU coming up pretty soon. So it's a great start for this Oklahoma State Cowboy football team. But they've got to keep heading in the right direction as the competition stiffens up. South Alabama, a team that was picked fourth in the Sun Belt this year. They'll play non-conference action next week against Alabama A&M. They open up Sun Belt play against Idaho in a couple of weeks. They don't have to play App State. That's the favorite in the league. But they have to go to Troy. And they've got to host Arkansas State in November. Those are the big games on South Alabama's schedule. 54 and 6 against unranked schools. First meeting against South Alabama. And the Cowboys with a 44 to 7 victory over the Jaguars to get to 2 0. We'll wrap it all up on the other side. <laughs>